Welcome to the introduction to the Propacity Score Matching Approach using Stata. This is an initiative of MMS Research Hub and my name is John Riveros. Contents of the chapter Application of Propacity Score Matching Justification for the use of the approach Basic considerations for Propensity Score Matching Initial concepts related to Propensity Score Matchings Counterfactual observational similar characteristics, average treatment effect, and finally, the propensity score matching a brief review of method and theory. Starting with the application of the propensity score matching, we can say it's commonly used in impact evaluations, relative to the topic of public policy analysis. It's used to create a statistical comparison group based on a model probability to estimate a treatment effect. It focuses in the establishment of effects on a dependent variable derived from the interaction of exogenous variables given a treatment. The average treatment effect of the program is calculated as a mean difference from the constructor comparison group. It compares the difference between observed outcomes from the treated versus the non-treated on a matched basis probability. So we can see here that the propensity score matching used probability as the main basis since it constructs comparison group based on model and covariates. Why the need of the propensity score matching? So, it helps to measure the treatment effects from control and treatment groups when we are operating in non-randomized experiments. It is used to match participants and non-participants of our program or intervention. It helped to estimate the impact of a treatment and the counterfactual is statistically generated. That is, statistical generation is made to the purpose to create a comparison group. It's articulated to the regression framework on the co context of maximum likelihood models, like logit and probit. So estimation have assumption we rely on in order to tell the truth and avoid spurious results. Consideration to use the propensity score matching. In the context of the analysis is non-experimental, so selection bias emerges in non-randomized experiments. It tries to replicate as much as possible the randomization of a program or intervention. Among with difference and difference, the propensity score matching is in the category of assuming conditional exogeneity of the intervention or the treatment. It gives internal validation of an intervention, but not exogenous validation. It's useful when only observed characteristics are believed to affect the program participation. An important concept is the counterfactual, which can be defined as all situation which is not happening in the universe because another situation happened. You can interpret this as what other possible outcome could have happened if a series of events didn't happen. To represent this idea, we got the next draw. We got our individual, right here, which we want to change his welfare. So, we made a program or intervention over him. And just one possible way we got after the intervention has been done. Either if our individual was treated or if it, wa if it was non-treated. We cannot have both outcomes and we can only measure one of them. The problem is, to understand the treatment effect, we need the proper counterfactual, which is given in, the, uh, in an ideal scenario by the non-treated for the same individual. However, in reality, we cannot measure the non-treated, so we don't know the proper counterfactual. The ideal counterfactual would be the same individual which was non-treated when the treatment has been applied or has been given. Propensity score matching try to develop this counterfactual, which is constructed as a statistical comparison group that is similar to the treatment group in terms of the observable characteristics. Another important concept is the observational similar characteristics. We can define as all observable and measurable characteristics among the treatment group and the control group. So, we are our individual, and this individual has characteristics related for, his, for himself, 
like age, gender, marital status, educational level, experience in the job and abilities, living time in the area, number of the children, and the type of job. And such observable characteristics can also include living in the area, features of the household, access to public services, access to markets, security that he has, access to health, energy consumption, type of the household, and income. Those are observable similar characteristics as an example we're using. So, the idea is that propensity score matching, based on these observable characteristics, try to estimate a comparison group, which is done as a statistical construction. The average treatment effect, it can be defined as the average gained outcomes of participants relative to the non-participants. So we're basically introducing uh, what would be the change of the treatment over the treatment group versus the control group. The term can be introduced as the next following equations, where basically the average treatment effect is a difference in expected outcomes. The first expected outcomes is relative to the same individual A, in parentheses 1, which, refle which reflects that it was treated when the treatment has been given, minus the expected outcome of the individual A, 0 in parentheses, which reflects it was non-participant when the treatment has been given. We got problems to measure this second part of the expression, since it is defined as the proper counterfactual, and we cannot measure this in reality. We can only make assumption about this. The equation is basically telling us that the expected outcomes in terms of the mean of the individual to the treatment can be estimated by comparing the expected value when the individual is non-participant. The propensity score matching tries to capture the effects of different observer coverage x on participation in a single propensity or index score. Outcomes of participants and non-participants with similar propensity scores are compared to obtain the program effect. To do this, propensity score matching constructs a statistical comparison group that is based on a model probability of participating on the treatment T, conditional to some covariates that, we, that are believed to affect the program participation. So, we can express that the probability and the propensity score or the index is based when the treatment has been given, so we're analyzing uh, the change to be a participant giving some coverage called X like those that we mentioned before the observable similar characteristics and thus we can construct the single propensity or the score index we need some conditions to use this kind of approach so a large amount of observations in the data are needed where the treatment must be already identified over the individuals, and observation must roughly equal for treated and non-treated groups. These conditions relative to the size of the sample or the data. Basically, since we are using to construct a model of probabilities, which is given by logistic regressions or probit regressions, we need a serious amount of observations. There is no special number, but since it uses the maximum likelihood estimator, we need to ensure a large amount of observations. Hopefully, it would be farther and greater than 1000 observations. Also, we need to ensure that the treated sample equally or roughly matches the non-treated sample, in order that the probability construct would be unbiased. Conditional independence assumption is also required. This assumption relates from the single expression given ahead. First, we got this variable which is defined as the outcome of individual A when it was treated. And we got in this section the, the outcome of the individual E 
from the comparison group, which means it was not treated. This uh, symbol expresses that it's independent, right? So basically the expression is telling us that from a treatment given to the individual A uh, related to some coverage X, both outcomes from the treated and the control group are independent, right? This is an important conditional for the consistency of the propensity scores results. Also, we need the assumption of common support called overlap condition which refers to the next expression. We need to ensure that the estimated probability of being participant given some correlates are between 0 and 1 because if it either the probability is 0 or it is 1 we don't have a complement so we cannot construct the statistical comparison group. So basically this assumption, the common support, ensures that the treatment observations have, a, have comparison observations. These ones could be nearby in the propensity score distribution. Thank you for watching this. This was a video of M&S Research Hub. See you in the next chapter.